Good morning. Welcome to everyone. It's great to have you out this morning. And so welcome to those who are here in person as well, so, as well as to those who join us online. It's great to have you participate in this service. Before we uh, get into the meat of our service, let's take a moment for prayer. Spirit, you lead us into the night. Sometimes the darkness is scary. Sometimes it brings peace. In the stillness of the night, help us come to you. Let us experience you in ways we have not before. As we wrestle with the questions of our lives, help us know what really matters. Amen. We come to a time of welcoming, so welcome to everyone, as well as sharing and announcements. So I would ask if there's anyone that has anything they wish to share or to uh, announce to the life and work of the congregation. The parent, oh, there it comes. <laughs> Wait long enough, someone will say something. <laughs> that we have UCW meeting uh, this coming Wednesday at 1.30 in the afternoon, and all women are welcome. Thank you. Silken asked me to make note of this. Um, the OPP Haldeman County has a number of fraud presentations coming up um, to fight fraud, not the other. Um, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Uh, the one in Hagersville on the 21st, Dunville Community Lifespan Center on March the 27th at 6 to 8, and on the 28th in Caledonia. Anyways, um, we can make sure this is put somewhere, so if people are curious, it's there. Um, just another announcement that we will be uh, celebrating and uh, noting it. Pie Day on March the 14th. And uh, so pie will be available as well as refreshments and conversation on March the 14th, that's Tuesday, in the LA Hall from 9 to noon and then from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock for anyone who wishes to come by. Um, join in some conversation, some socializing, and some pie. And that's uh, around the whole idea of being welcoming and inviting to everyone, regardless of their, uh, of their gender and uh, their sexuality. So, uh, and also, conversation about how we can be more intentional and public in, uh, in our invitations and welcoming. Good morning. I just want to thank everyone who was involved or who attended the World Day of Prayer that we hosted on Friday. We had a few hiccups, but that just showed how amazing uh, we work together as a community. So thank you if you attended, and thank you if you made a donation, and uh, we'll be doing it again in four or five years. So. <laughs> okay. Um. Anything else? I'm going to take that as a no. So let us continue with our uh, time of worship, and as we light our candles, let us join in singing, Gather Us In, number seven in more voices. Please stand if you're able. Come into the wilderness, 
Step into the unknown possibility that is here in this place with all of our questions. We step into the wilderness because we have questions and it is here that it feels safe to ask what we long to know. Let us pray. God of night and day, we dare to venture out into the unknown, to the edge of the wilderness where you will guide us. We come to be led and encouraged. We come to find answers to questions we didn't even know we had. We come to find you steadfast and true. Amen. Now let us join in our opening hymn, Who is my mother, or kindred in spirit through Jesus Christ, however you know it best. We've sung this a few times before. It's number 178 and more voices. If, uh, yeah, we've got a recording of that one there. That's okay. included a time for young, those who are young in spirit. Do we have anyone like that today that wants to come forward? Feel free, Emerson, if you want. That'd be, be, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's, I, I, I get it. That's fine. Grace? Nope. Okay. Well, since I did a little bit of preparation, I'm going to take a bit of time then anyways, and this is open to everyone. <laughs> so, it's the question about uh, when you look around the world, what are the things that really make you feel good about this world that we live in? Let's start there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Beauty and nature. The people in it. Dave, the meaning of the song we just sang. Yes, excellent. Sharon, dog Sadie. I know I love my dog Ridley. <laughs> All right, good start. Now, when you keep looking around the world, are there things you see that you wish could change? That's sort of a nice way of saying, are there things that seem really wrong about this world? Homelessness, greed, 
war, Russia, you know, all the, yeah, there's hatred, um, racism. Yeah, we can keep going on, can't we? There are so many beautiful things, but sometimes the beauty, I think, gets clouded. Maybe it's the best way to put it. By so much that's wrong. So many ways that we create pain for others. But later on in the service, in the scripture, we get to, to uh, one of the most famous verses, John three sixteen, where Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoso, whoever believes in him will have eternal life. But it goes on to say, I come not to condemn the world, but to save the world. We are called, when we say we believe in Jesus, it also means we follow Jesus, we try to work with Jesus, is what I really believe. And it's to save the world. It's not to save the world to go to heaven, but to save the world right here, right now. To save the world from itself sometimes. How do we work with Jesus to create a world where we can focus so much more on all those things we spoke about that we feel that so right about this place? How do we, con how do we fight against or how do we keep from falling into hatred, racism, war, violence, anger? Jesus came to save the world. And if we believe in Jesus, if we follow Jesus, if we want to be like Jesus, what does that mean for us and how we live in this beautiful world? So with that, I say amen. Moving on. Let us pray again. We offer our prayer of confession when we look at, look at this world and ask, how are we kept from that loving relationship with the world and with God? And so we pray. Looking out into the wild possibility of this moment, O oh God, it feels like an impassable mountain or a vast, deepening sea hindering our way forward. We feel discouraged and overwhelmed. We don't move from where we are. You know our hearts, O oh God, and the disbelief that has come to live there. You know how the bleakness of this night immobilizes us. We are timid. We fear failure. We confess fear of dying, even if it is for the sake of truly living. Amen. Beloved, the God who calls us to take bold steps outward is the one who journeys closely within. In God there is companionship, and renewed strength through the wilderness of every night. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we don't, we don't have a ministry of music, and so we're just going to sing another hymn. And it's uh, one we've sung. It's from More Voices. It's Behold, Behold, I Make All Things New. So it's the, uh, the, the lyrics are simple. Behold, behold, I make all things new, beginning with you and starting from today. So, please stand if you're able.
Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. <laughs> the reading this morning is from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. <laughs> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but that he came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you, Jane. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. As I read this passage of Scripture this morning, I am left asking, are we Nicodemus? Now, Nicodemus is a religious leader in Jerusalem. He's a Pharisee, an expert on Scripture, and spends a great deal of time reflecting on and debating how Scripture tells us about God. He's also a man who is comfortable in his privilege. He is living a secure and comfortable life, but apparently he is also feeling a level of uncertainty with where things are heading in his community and the world around him. We aren't provided with anything specific in this passage about that. But perhaps he is concerned with the violence that is a part of this society. Perhaps he is left uneasy with the promotion of values that are counter to Jewish traditions. The fact that within Roman imperialism, everything points to the emperor, all loyalty, all wealth 
called praise. Perhaps Nicodemus is disturbed by the exploitation of the disadvantaged in his society. Perhaps. We can only speculate. But in any case, Nicodemus makes his way to see Jesus and talk with him. He approaches this wandering teacher with respect and hoping to find greater insight into the things he is saying. Nicodemus comes to Jesus with questions. What is happening in our world? What, what do I and what do we do in this time and place? And what is God doing right now? And finally, who exactly is Jesus? Now, John spends a lot of time and ink answering that question. Jesus offers a great many stories of Jesus answering that question. John offers a great many stories of Jesus answering that question, describing himself through metaphor. In this passage, Jesus, in a roundabout way, says he is the Son of Man, but also born from above. Other translations of this scripture like the one Jane read today, uses the term born again. That he is born of the Spirit. But, and this is also important, on questioning, Jesus does not say this quality is restricted to him. When asked if it means returning to your mother's womb, Jesus essentially asserts that one is never too old or too late to renew yourself. Or your faith. To be born from above by the Spirit means your eyes are opened to a new way of seeing. You are more open to being guided by God, not by the world or the values of a world that so often rejects the values God prioritizes. This is a call to look to a God of love and life not to focus on a world that promotes wealth, power, fame, and status. All too often we seem to mix these things up. We will hear messages from some some so-called religious authorities who insist a faithful life leads to wealth or power. It is a path to status and fame Jesus says, if you are born of the Spirit, you do not know where the wind is coming or where it is blowing you. You can't know those things. And that message from Jesus, that can be troubling because it is a call for a level of faith we clearly and reasonably struggle with. The idea of letting go and letting the Spirit take us to unknown destinations is frightening because we want to be in control, don't we? We want to know where we're headed and how we're going to get there. A book I read a few years ago talks about this in some detail. It's called Sailboat Church, and it's written by a woman named Joan Gray, who argues congregations should be open to letting the Spirit move them in their ministry, in their mission. They should be open to new possibilities and making use of our resources and our energies and opportunities as the Spirit opens doors and nudges us forward to set our sails and let the, the wind of the Spirit blow us. And that image contrasts with the common idea of us being in a rowboat and pulling on the oars to reach a prearranged destination. We're all in the boat and we're rowing together. We've, we know exactly where we're going and we're going to get there, no matter if, even if it means we just have to row a little bit harder. Does that sound familiar? And no matter how hard the current may be pushing and pulling us in a different direction, Just row a bit harder. And Joan Gray says, put down the oars and hoist the sail. 
Let yourself be born to a new way of life. That's what Jesus tells Nicodemus. Let God who move you in a new way. Let your eyes be open to a new way of seeing the world around you and to the possibilities before you. The world does not need to be like it is right now. The world can be saved from itself. Today's scripture ends with one of the most well-known passages in the Bible. I noted that earlier. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We've got that one memorized. But it is of note that Jesus does not stop there. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. I think it is important when reading these words to keep in mind that in this context, believe is much more than a form of intellectual agreement or assent. It is an action, a way of living, of following. It means to look at what Jesus is saying, how Jesus is living and acting in the world. This is not about finding a ticket into the afterlife. It is about making a world of love and life here. About making a world that values all its inhabitants. It is about saving the world from itself. The world we live in sends us a lot of messages. We are all too often enticed to isolate ourselves from the suffering of others. We are encouraged to concern ourselves only with our own welfare, our own safety, our own comfort. Normally, We only express our concerns or work for the welfare of others after we have secured our own future or our own security. We are told there is nothing we can do to make a difference in the world, that these troubles such as climate change, the attacks on those who are different from the norm, the violence that seems to seep into so much of our everyday life, they cannot be helped. It is best to try and protect ourselves. In other words, let the world burn. Let our house keep standing. I generally try to keep from commenting on the politics in other countries. But there was an incident in the United States last week that, for me, illustrates the necessity of communities of faith such as ours being public, intentional, and explicit in expressing our love and our welcome to people of all sexualities and genders. On Pi Day, for, for example. See, this past week there was a gathering of what is called the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC for short. It's a gathering of essentially extreme conservative thinkers, personalities, and supporters. And normally I wouldn't comment on what they have to say. But in one of the speeches, one particular speaker, who I won't name here, made the statement, transgenderism should be eradicated to be rid of that, in the quotes, ideology. Well, he's now arguing he is talking about the idea, not the people. But if I am honest, and I need to be honest, I see that as playing with semantics, and the result is the same. A great many people feel threatened. They see the hatred and the violence that is so apparent in those words and wonder where they can turn and who they can rely on and trust. Where, they, where can they find love in the world? And if we are honest with ourselves, those ideas do not stop at a border. 
if we truly see ourselves as a loving and compassionate and a welcoming and inviting community, we must be clear and open about that. Otherwise, we are letting others who do not share our values but who are extremely vocal establish how the rest of the world views us as a church from the outside. Jesus comes to save the world. Not to save those who look like him, think like him, pray like him. He comes to save the world. And we are called to see the world with new eyes and take that journey to a new world with him. We are called to walk with Jesus, to work with Jesus, to save the world from hatred, from bigotry, from greed and self-interest. We are called to walk and to talk with courage and compassion. And it is a journey where we may not know exactly where we are headed. We may not know who all we will meet along the way. But we can follow that path knowing we walk with Jesus. And as we walk, and as we talk, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Silken. As we make our way through Lent, we have a number of different affirmations of faith that uh, we're invited to share. So I would uh, invite you, if you are able, to please stand to join in this affirmation of faith. Look to the wilderness of the hills. From where does our help come? Our help comes from God, who made heaven and earth, who sustains the universe, keeping the sun in place and the moon on track, provides sunshine and shade to nurture and protect life day and night. Look to the skies. From where does our help come? Our help comes from God, who showed such immense love for us in the person of Jesus Christ, who came not to judge or condemn anyone, but to give eternal life. Look around. From where does our help come? Our help comes from God, whose spirit is always at our side, whose presence is like the wind, powerful, unpredictable, yet personal, stirring us into new possibilities and bringing about new births. Amen. Please be seated. (coughs) 
we look around our lives and we are grateful. We are grateful for so much that God has provided. And so when we're given the opportunity, we take, it, we take that to offer what we can for the creation of a world that's more just, more loving, more compassionate. And so we give what we can of who we are, of what we have. The offering has, will now be received and blessed as we sing Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray. We bring you gifts, O God, with all our questions. We know that you will work wonders with all we offer to renew the, to renew the bleakness with new wonders. Amen. Please be seated. continue to pray. We continue to pray as a community of faith, gathering all our prayers together, our individual prayers, and offering them as a community together, offering our prayers of gratitude and our prayers of hope our prayers of concern. And so we pray. We come to you, O God, in the bleakness of our doubt. When questions arise, and we are sure where to, and we are sure where to find our strength. We pray for your blessing in our boldness to dare to give voice to so many questions. We want to know so much, and it is hard to challenge the voices that deride, put down, and condemn our wondering. We listen for the wind to blow to hear it sound howling through our souls with understanding and grace. O God, we are newborns in our hope and confusion. Hear the deep yearnings of our heart, O God. Open in us the ways of genuine compassion. We live in a world of stark and confusing contrasts, beauty and ugliness, generosity and impoverishment, hope and despair, honesty and deception. We turn to you seeking in the stillness the refuge and gift of silence. Your presence, calm, beckoning, calm, beckoning voice and renewing perspective. Guide us in our prayer. Strengthen us in our action. For this, our community, nation, and world.
healing God. We take time to name those we know in need of your healing spirit, those who are ill, those who are in pain, those struggling with anxiety and depression. those with questions about what today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the day after that might bring for themselves personally or for the world that they know. We pray for those with concerns over finance, over the stability of their home life, those living with fear, Pray for those who are grieving, those struggling with being lonely or alone, and those awaiting the answers to so many things that can sometimes be left unanswered. May they know your strength, may they know your compassion and your presence. In the faith, hope, and love of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God, Only Wise. Number 264 in Voices United. I thank you for joining your voice to the chorus that is us in praise and worship and prayer. And as you go forth, I offer you this blessing. The wildness of night can feel endless and so lonely, but the wind blows and the spirit moves again. Know that the sun will not hurt you by day nor the moon by night. 
for God will protect you and watch over you this day and always. Amen.